Hello, everybody. I want to talk a little bit about um, the difficulty some people might have with understanding what contact is like with the beings that are here right now and how um, how varied the experience can be because there's more than one there's more than one race. It's not just one. Some people are being outright abducted. Some people are being contacted through the mental environment. They're being heavily focused on. Some people are having other kinds of experiences. But when you read the Allies of Humanity briefings and you read the new message, it gives you the proper context that all this is taking place within. It gives you a very proper context. So it's not a big mystery. You know, It's and it's great to have this um uh, uh this understanding of a greater context that that you know you see all this stuff and it's no longer like yes there's still an element of mystery to it of course but which when it's within the proper context it's like oh yeah okay now now i get it um i've had so many experiences with these beings that is it's really just ridiculous it, I've never thought this would be something that happened in my life. It's not something I like wished for or hoped for. It just started happening. I told a friend this last year. I was like, I, I was like talking with him on his YouTube channel because he invited me to do an interview and he didn't know that all this shit was happening to me. We were talking about other subjects, but it, suddenly somehow i don't know how it like veered into alien land and uh he's like yeah i think that's like really far in the future when we'll be able to come into contact and i couldn't help myself i'm just like uh <laughs> uh he's like why what and i'm like well i didn't tell him i've been experiencing stuff but i sort of kind of did and i told him Imagine everything is normal, everything's going great for you, and you're just living your little life, and then suddenly this shit starts happening. Can you imagine how stressful that would be? And how difficult it would be, you know, trying to communicate it? Um, that's how people feel when they go through this stuff. Sometimes people, even people who are abducted, they may be getting abducted for their whole life, and they just don't tell anybody about it. They're not running to the Discovery Channel, who you know, who might be doing a show on aliens or whatever. They're not running to uh, MUFON or some kind of YouTube channel that's popular with the strange, and they're they're not they're not trying to invite scrutiny. They're not trying to make a name for themselves. But there comes a certain point where these people, they do feel like they have to get their their story out. Even though they've been suffering with it for a very long time and they kept it all bottled up. But with me, my, my situation is a little bit different. Um, here's the thing. Anybody familiar with Rupert Sheldrake? He, he did a fascinating study where it's called, he even wrote a book about it called The Sense of Being Looked At. And he found that m most people can tell and feel when they're being looked at. And I've noticed this as well. You've noticed it. You've probably noticed it. When somebody's looking at you, you can tell and you kind of like look in their direction. It's like another sense. It's part of the mental environment that the new message talks about so much. Um, and I've noticed it, like, if I look at somebody and I'm, like, really kind of looking at somebody, they'll, they'll turn their head because they know, they can feel that somebody's looking at them. Same thing with me. If I can tell I'm being, if, if I can feel I'm being looked at, I kind of, like, look my head in the direction of where it may be coming from. Uh, and it's a feeling. It's just kind of a feeling you get. Now... Imagine if you're being looked at by another race, maybe even three or four of them or more, and imagine that their focus is really intense. They're trying to gain access to your mind. They're trying to influence your mind. 
They're trying to persuade you in certain ways. They're trying to dissuade you in certain ways. I've experienced all that and more. You, you know, so if anybody doubts this stuff, I wish they could experience it for just one night. Just one night. And they would come out of the they would come out of it and be like, I know damn sure that was not just in my mind. It's not just my imagination. That that's definitely not uh me having a psychotic or schizophrenic experience like you know you know i'm a very sane person the, 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 this stuff and on top of that it's not just a intense focus there's energetic things that goes that go on i've i've even had very close encounters on this property very very close encounters physically on this property um i don't know why there but that's like a lot of people who have experiences like this, they don't know why they're being targeted so heavily. Um, one thing they try to do is they try to make you feel special. That's kind of like the love bombing thing they do. Like with cults, uh, to, in order to get you addicted to that feeling, to make you feel like, you, that, oh, this is really important. You're being focused. Like when they're focusing on you like that, like it's probably hybrids do this the most. Because they have more of an emotional connection to, to humanity. They do this love bombing thing. And I've experienced that m more than a few times, man. It's crazy when they do it. It's it's really, really intense. Um, so that's like when they're trying to make you feel super good. And cr trying to sell you on... And they give you, they give you thoughts. Specific thoughts. Um, but... There's other times where oh, I'm not falling for it. I'm not. I'm not all. I'm not all about it. You know, some people are. Some people get targeted like that and are just like, "Woohoo, this is awesome." <laughs> but the fact that I'm not, then they try to do dissuasion because I'm outspoken against this kind of thing. They try to dissuade you. They try to threaten you energetically. I've I, I've had that happen more than anything else. Trying to really disturb you. I'm talking really, really fucking disturb you. And I'm not easily disturbed. With the shit I've been through in my life, I'm not the kind of person that's easily disturbed. But it doesn't stop them from trying. You wouldn't believe what I've been through with this shit. Uh, it was every single night for about four months there. Every single night. All kinds of different stuff too. It's not the same thing every night. And they, they were really trying to disturb me. I had to take a couple months off of work at one point because of the stress, the sheer level of stress. I could not sleep at night. They weren't letting me sleep. I could only sleep when the sun came up. And by then, it's like I can only get a few hours of sleep before I have to get up and go to work. Um, I lost about 20 pounds last year from all this. Uh, the fact that I was smoking cigars all the time didn't help. Uh, you know, if you're somebody who's super healthy like me, you're juicing celery every day, you know, you're doing the uh, smoothies every day, you have a big salad every day, you know, you're doing all this stuff every, every day. Um, lots of fruit, lots of veggies, lots of potatoes. I love potatoes. But the fact that I was smoking cigars on top of doing all that, I just it started to make me look pretty gaunt. And on top of the fact I'm being targeted by this off world presence, that's just it's relentless, man, I started to look like I was sick, like really, uh, like there's something wrong with me. I'm starting to I'm starting to look better now cuz I'm a naturally thin person. I was thin even back when I was having steak and eggs for breakfast or hamburgers for lunch. You know, even back when I did eat that way, I was still thin. I still look the same way I do now. You know, don't give me that vegan shit like, "Oh, that's why you look so skinny." Man, I know people who are naturally skinny who look even th more thin than me, and they eat crap. They eat meat every day. You know, and what are you going to tell them? Well, you're so skinny because you had you eat hamburgers every day. That's why you're so thin. <laughs> no, some people are just naturally thin. Okay, just that's how it works. Uh, but when this all this shit was happening, I looked like I had cancer, man. It, it, and it, because it was so damn stressful, like it was really, really stressful. They were even trying to fuck with my work. There's some, there's energy at work sometimes where you can tell there is an energy there, man. I've had to pray every day out loud at work to, to the angelic presence to, for there to be peace at my work, for the air to be clear at my work. Um, 
and I remember, and they get the this energy they get through to some people. I remember in one two week period, it was so crazy. We had about six people quit, six seven people quit in a two week period. They all just had to up and leave, and I can feel it. I can feel why. Sometimes it's like it feels like there's like a chaotic, a really chaotic energy, like something's about to explode. And other people will comment on it too. Like it feels like something's, it feels like something's about to explode. Like it's just chaos. Um, and it, it's not just something that's in the air. It's not just one of those days. You don't know what I go through with this. The presences I feel. How much they try to fuck with your life. They try to isolate you. That's one of the things they try to do. If they can't win you over. Then they try to isolate you and cut you off from the world. They try to fuck with your relationships. They try to make you feel out of place in the world. They try to make you feel really frustrated. They try to disturb you, make you feel really disturbed. Um, but like the new message says, and like the allies of humanity say, you have a spiritual power within you that they don't have. These beings are not spiritually connected at all. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. So in a way, even though they're really manipulative and they're really obsessed and they're, they're working all kinds of angles all over the world um, and they're targeting so many people, they're also weak in very key specific ways. You're very robust compared to them. Very, very robust. You're almost like in the way we look at Bigfoot, how Bigfoot has like a natural affinity for the land. And they can smell you coming a mile away. They're so robust. Like, you know, uh, and they also do have like uh, a mental awareness that is rather strong as well. That's why they're so hard to catch, right? Um, they're very aware beings, but they're also very robust. They can handle environments that we can't handle. But that's like what we are to them. These beings that are here tinkering with stuff. The way the new message and the allies of humanity put it, these beings are in a compromised evolutionary position. They're very compromised. Um, they're not robust like we are. They literally evolved in sterile environments. They have to be so careful in even coming here. If they catch one biological agent, just one one virus, just one bacteria, it'll wipe out, it, it could potentially wipe out their whole, a whole ship or a whole, oh, the new message says entire worlds could be wiped out if, if, there's cross contamination like that. Um, that's a big deal with inter interracial dealings in space with with different races, different forms of intelligent life. That you know, so I can feel that some of them have gotten very very close to me, and I can feel that, and I know that the the big unblinking black eyes with the smooth face like with the grays, that's not actually how they look. That's a suit. It's like a bio suit. It's, it's, a, it's almost like a, a hazmat suit, so to speak. It's a bio suit to help protect them from the agents within this biosphere. They can't, it's like their own version of a spacesuit. Like, like that's not how they actually look. They don't have giant unblinking eyes. Um, they, I think they, they use that for two reasons. One, to hide their identity. Um, well, really three, re three reasons. To hide their identity, to protect themselves physically, and also for intimidation. Intimidation purposes. Uh, because their mental focus is so intense that when you see something, because that they have that ad adaptive advantage. They just have this adaptive advantage that we have not gained yet being in this environment. They have very intense mental focus. So when you feel this intense mental focus and you get a good look at what they look like, at least with this uh, suit on, and you see these giant unblinking eyes, smooth features, it's intimidating. But if you could actually see how they look underneath that, you, you might still feel somewhat intimidated, but there'd be, there, there'd be a, a, a revealing about it. You wouldn't feel as intimidated because you would see like, whoa, the being would look way more primordial. It would look like it actually has features. It would have a kind of history. You could tell there's a history etched into its features. They might even look somewhat decrepit. They are very compromised beings, and that's why they're here, because these beings are compromised. They want to have 
dibs on how the resources of this world are going to be divvied up. Because they're convinced that we're destroying the world and they need all these resources and they're part of uh, the, these uh, trading collectives just for resources, races that are in similar positions that have destroyed their own worlds. That I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but that shit's happened out there. We're surrounded by it. There's intelligent life everywhere. It's it, the new message says it's way it's 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 not like how we perceive it. Like, oh, maybe one day, maybe one day there's a we'll find an intelligent life form that happens to be somewhere, maybe on the other side of the galaxy, there's one other life form. It's just us and them. <laughs> no. No, there there are tens of thousands of forms of intelligent life, even w within our local, within our local uh, so, uh, part of the galaxy. It's everywhere, and they. It's not like there's one overarching government that rules them all. It's way too complicated for that. It's way too complex. It's way too vast. Not all of them know it, all the other ones exist. I mean. So, there could be some races that are relatively close to us that don't even know we exist because we're, we're they've never come in this direction and they're too busy dealing with their own stuff. Some races know we exist. Some do. And some of them are leaving us alone. Some of them uh, are not worried. Some of them are worried. Some of them are uh, overreacting uh, with our development and are trying to... Um, steer things there that's why it's called an intervention uh and that's the beings you come into contact with and they are not the most spiritually advanced beings they do not have a spirituality at all they're very technologically oriented they're very secular they're almost machine-like in how they think and behave they're not actual machines but they sure as hell think like machines and behave like machines And I've, I've felt that as well. Uh, I just wanted to lay some of this out because I know I can literally feel it sometimes. Like people, people getting in, getting into this information who are not ready for it, or they just come across it and they are not ready for it. I can sense the amount of shock they go through and the sheer level of denial or. Uh, Cognitive dissonance they might experience. Like, what? This is insane. Like, yeah, it is insane. Doesn't mean I'm not experiencing it. You know, I've been through way too much with this shit. It's it's actually... It's ridiculous. It really is. Um, I just wanted to lay some of that out. <laughs>